G'day and thanks for watching the latest episode of our YouTube travel series as we take you to fabulous Launceston in Tasmania. Now, if you're planning your own trip to Lonnie, in this video, we'll bring you tips for 10 amazing things to see and do, including a wine tour to here in the Tamar Valley. More on that a little later on. Right now, let's check what else is coming up. In this video, we'll pound the pavement on a walking tour with Launceston by foot. Get arty at the Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery. Fly high on the Cataract Gorge scenic chairlift. Climb every mountain, well, one at least, in Ben Lomond National Park. Try some top drops at Duquesne Brewing. And much more. But before we set sail, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiring travel ideas. Basking beside the Tamar River in northern Tassie, Launceston has a rich history to explore and a regal feel. Thanks in no small part to its picturesque parks and gardens and incredible cache of heritage buildings. Now, as you explore Launceston's CBD, it does feel a little bit like you're stepping back in time. The period architecture here is absolutely stunning. And that's not surprising given this is the third oldest city in the country. And Launceston by foot will be more than happy to show you around. So Launceston by Foot is a walking tour, so we wander around the city, we talk about some of our favourite stories, the people, the buildings, uh, but we also love to show off our beautiful city. We're very passionate about our town and we want to make sure that everyone who comes here has a great experience. So Launceston is a pretty historic town, so we were settled in 1806. You'll find wandering around the city the buildings are, are kept in incredible condition and you can really feel that, that history and, and how deep it goes. My personal favourite is the Crown Mill, uh, which you'll find just next door to our Harvest Market here in Launceston, uh, which operates on the Saturdays. So the Crown Mill was built and owned by a man named Thomas Affleck, um, and he was a really successful flour miller in, in Tassie. And the building is one of those ones that you sort of walk past as a local and you, you forget to look at it. And, and when you do and you really sit and notice it, it, it is stunning. And special mention to my fave building on the tour, Lonnie's Grand Post Office, which opened in 1891. Launceston by Foot's tour runs on Fridays and Saturdays. Now, speaking of heritage buildings, we're staying at the excellent Leisure Inn Penny Royal Hotel and Apartments, which started life as a corn mill back in the 1800s. It offers a mix of heritage rooms and contemporary suites and incorporates an on-site adventure park, which the kids will absolutely love. It's another opportunity to step back in time to the colonial era and features several rides and attractions, including the epic cliff walk and zip line. The views from the top are amazing, and of course, what goes up must come down. Next stop, Lonnie's impressive home of art and culture. Alrighty, now Lonnie's Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery is one of the oldest and largest cultural facilities in regional Australia. It dates back to 1890. 1.5 million artworks and objects in its collection. Do not panic, I am not going to show you them all, but I am going to choose one or two must-sees here at the Art Gallery's site at Royal Park, and I'm going to get some help to do it. Hi, I'm Shane Fitzgerald. I'm the director of the Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery here in Launceston, Tasmania. Uh, we have two sites across the city, the, the gallery here at Royal Park and the museum at Inveresk. And uh, QB Mag, as it's affectionately known, is the third oldest cultural institution in Australia's history. 
An absolute must-see is the first Tasmanians exhibition as a whole, but within that are the unique shell necklaces of our Tasmanian Aboriginals. That is unique to Northern Tasmania, with necklaces included and worn by people such as Chokanini, um, and they span hundreds of years of cultural practice. Um, Tasmania has a, a dark history that we acknowledge, and working closely with our Indigenous community, we're able to develop this exhibition that celebrates their scientific invention, their education, their cultural practice, uh, and it's something that's not only an insight for visitors to it, um, but it's also quite a healing exhibition in many ways. Just to the west of the CBD lies another of Lonnie's signature attractions, Cataract Gorge Reserve. And I'm up for a bird's eye view of this stunning natural setting. Well, it sounds like a bit of a cliche, but no visit to Lonnie would be complete without spending at least a couple of hours out here at Cataract Gorge. Spectacular, I have to say. And home to what is believed to be the world's longest single span chairlift. What an amazing experience. The views are incredible. Lots of other things to see and do here at Cataract Gorge as well. Beautiful gardens to explore, some great walks that you can do. All in all, a very pleasant way to spend an afternoon. For an entirely different perspective of the gorge, head over to Seaport and board a River and Gorge cruise with Tamar River Cruises. There are departures throughout the day on board the venerable Lady Launceston, and our skipper and guide Hewan provides commentary on points of interest along the way. We're soon passing under the 19th century wrought iron King's Bridge, the original half of which was fabricated in Manchester, England. From there, we cruise beneath the soaring gorge walls, which are thought to be some 65 million years old. And after a hard day of sightseeing, I've worked up quite an appetite. Now, two years ago, Lonnie was designated a City of Gastronomy by UNESCO. Sounds pretty fancy. What does it mean? Well, it's more than having a bunch of great restaurants around town. It's really an interplay of all levels of food production. And we're visiting an eatery down here at Seaport that lives and breathes the ethos of paddock to plate. Mudba melds a sophisticated look with a relaxed vibe and serves modern Australian dishes with an Asian twist. A glass of wine in hand from the impressive wine wall, I catch up with owner Don to discuss that gastronomic gong. Well, somebody at UNESCO decided that this is the place of, of some pretty serious gastronomy. And really, if I'm to sum that up for, for an audience, we're lucky, our food is close. Food miles are down, the food is free of contaminants, almost everything, and I've been fortunate enough to travel. And I've got to say, the food in Tasmania has the best flavours of anything that I've ever eaten. And let's put it into context here, I mean, you are an actual farmer. You grow the food, a lot of what's served here at Mud Bar, so just tell us a bit about that. We grow a, a Wagyu cross beef, so we're using a Murray Gray cross for the full blood Wagyu. We have fat lambs. It's a lamb that, that puts down fat into the muscle, and I, I've got a job to find anything in the market that is as good as the lamb we produce. Goats, and now we breed rabbits. We have organic principles on the farm. Through and through, it's about the soil. If the soil is done properly, it looks after the animals, the animals look after us, and we then consume what it is we produce. There's a lot of people say that it's paddock and plate, but we actually do it as best we can in, in every way that we can.
And no discussion about Lonnie's food scene would be complete without mention of the popular Harvest Market, which, as we heard from Maddie earlier, takes place on Saturday mornings in the CBD. It's an opportunity to taste test plenty of mouthwatering local produce and stock up on good vibes in the process. There are plenty of memorable day trip destinations within easy reach of Lonnie, and I've opted to visit one of the region's most spectacular natural landscapes, Ben Lomond National Park. I'm planning to visit that lookout high on the Ben Lomond Plateau, and I've got to climb something called Jacob's Ladder to get there. Well, welcome to Ben Lomond National Park. Wow, what an adventure getting up here. I've just driven up Jacob's Ladder and I've taken a shot of the switchbacks just to show you what it's like. It's pretty hairy, but the road is well maintained, definitely doable. And when you get up to the top here, you just get this sense of being in an incredible remote wilderness, your head's in the clouds, just extraordinary. And it's all just 90 minutes drive from Lonnie. So definitely worth doing. I can't recommend it highly enough. And if you have the time and shoe leather, you can hike to the summit. Ben Lomond is one of just two ski fields in Tassie. There's an alpine village up on the plateau and the newly opened Ben Lomond base at the bottom of the range. During the winter months, it offers gear and snow chain hire, and in the warmer months, it's well worth dropping in to take advantage of the on-site cafe. The humble toasted Sanger never tasted so good. Back in Lonnie, those with a thirst for adventure and a locally brewed beer will love Duquesne Brewing. Former mountain trekking guide, now brewer Will Horan, conceived the idea for this local success story on the slopes of the Duquesne Range in Cradle Mountain Lake St Clair National Park. And the rest, as they say, is history. Pair a tasting paddle of the brewery's signature wares with a sensational wood-fired pizza. And if you need tips for an upcoming trek, they'll throw those in for free. We wrap up this video with a visit to the esteemed Tamar Valley wine region just north of Launceston. We're joining Prestige Tours Tasmania on their half-day wine tour. And our guide, Eamon, kicks things off with a visit to Velo Wines. The Tamar is renowned for producing cool climate wines such as Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Riesling and Sparklings, most of which feature on the tasting list at this impressive cellar door. From there, we head for Small Wonder Wines, a certified organic vineyard with a focus on quality over quantity. The wines are fab, as is this shared platter of local specialties, which is included in the tour price. And just when I thought things couldn't get any more idyllic, Eamon pulls in to Swinging Gate Vineyard. The cellar door here is packed with character, as are the wines themselves. Special mention to the Friars Fizz Pet Nat. All in all, this tour makes an awesome day out from the city. For more ideas for great things to do in Launceston, just head to our website. <laughs>